Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at some updated performance of the ROG Ally in dock mode. When I refer to dock mode, I mean plugged into power and an external monitor. Now ASUS has really kind of given us a little more when we have it plugged into the proper PD power supply. 65 watt, the stock power supply that comes with it, or their ROG charger dock works really well for this. And with it set up in dock mode, we can definitely get a lot more performance out of the Ally. And first and foremost, this is a handheld gaming PC, but that's not going to stop a lot of people from using it as kind of a full-fledged desktop PC connected to a larger display with maybe a keyboard and mouse connected over USB or even Bluetooth. And one of my favorite accessories right now is the ROG charger dock. We've got HDMI, USB 2.0, and USB Type-C power out. This will do 65 watts, plus it'll send that video signal over USB Type-C to the HDMI built into this little charger dock. And it looks something like this once it's all connected. So basically, we've got this plugged into a wall outlet, USB Type-C to the USB Type-C port on the Ally, and HDMI to your favorite display. You can connect a keyboard and mouse, or if you want to connect a controller, it's really up to you. And you know, I've done a video on this when it was first released, but the performance overall with the Ally itself has definitely been upgraded given all of the driver updates that ASUS and AMD have done for this Ryzen Extreme Z1 chip. And speaking of updates, I'm actually making this video on July 5th. I think it's going to be released on July 6th, but today we just got a really nice BIOS update and an Armory Crate SE update from ASUS. If you're interested in checking out their full change log, I'll leave a link in the description. But uh, some UX improvements have been done. We've now got a new modified FPS limiter. So 30, 45, 60, 90, and 120. Plus we can turn it off. The TDP configuration from the BIOS has been updated to kind of display the correct TDP levels once we set it up in manual mode. We'll go over that in a second. But they're always pushing new updates for this. And a lot of the times, you know, performance really isn't impacted. But with this one here, I've seen a nice jump, especially in dock mode. Now, real quick, give you a look at my setup. Basically, I've got the uh, charger dock plugged into the Ally using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. And I've got a keyboard and mouse plugged into that free USB 2.0 port on the dock itself. This is just in a cheap little stand that I picked up on Amazon. You can get this for the Steam Deck or even an Android phone. Ally fits right in here. We've got a full-blown desktop setup now. You could use this for work, you could use it for school, but you know, the main thing that I want to do is some gaming on this, and I have created one more video when this initially released, showing off some 1440p and 4K gaming on this. We've got Skyrim 4K low, and since then we can actually go up to medium 4K on this device, run it right there at 60, which is really impressive for an iGPU, but this is an older game. Either way, still pretty impressive in my opinion, but what I'm going to do now is just plug this into my game capture so we can get a better look at everything. And I want to show you what to do to get that TDP up and a couple little tweaks that I've done here. All right, so here it is, plugged in with that ROG charger dock. That way I can get a full 65 watt boost on this thing. As you can see, we've got that Ryzen Z1 Extreme, 16 gigs of 6400 DDR5, and of course the built-in Radeon RDNA 3 graphics, basically 780M, runs it up to 2700 megahertz. ASUS has put out a ton of updates here since uh, the launch, and this was one of the big reasons I wanted to come back and test this, because uh, we do have a significant bump in performance kind of across the board. There are a couple little tweaks that I've done here, but the main thing, you know, when you're running in dock mode, we do not have to worry about battery life. So from operating mode, we're in manual mode, and we're set up to 53 watts. So this is kind of our maximum boost here, but this is around 42 right across the board while we're gaming, if the game needs to pull that much. So we can basically get a steady 42 watts out of this thing. And if you were worried about, you know, uh, heat or anything like that, we've got a fan curve on both of these fans that you can fully adjust. So while I'm in dock mode, always in manual, want to get the most out of this thing. And there was one other thing that I did here, which actually seemed to increase performance in a lot of games. Core isolation from the Windows settings. Microsoft does suggest turning this off for better gaming performance. And in some cases, for instance, Cyberpunk 2077, I got a 9 FPS boost just by turning this off. And remember, a lot of it will be coming down to running this at such a high wattage. But uh, last thing here, I've got our wattage over here and I use Core Temp because it's just easy to bring up. I've got CPU Z and we'll just stress it out. You'll see, jumps up to 52, but it'll slowly creep back down to around 42. So right there, we can do 42 watts on this APU while we're gaming, and it really does make a huge difference. 
Before we jump into some game testing, I did want to show you a few benchmarks that I ran on this unit. First up, we've got 3D Mark Night Raid coming in with a 29,266. Fire Strike 7,556, which is really great for an APU and integrating graphics. And finally, we've got Time Spy with a 3,162. So we're not far off from the 3 gigabyte GTX 1060 with this 780M iGPU in the ROG Ally. Moving over to some real world gaming. First up, we've got Horizon Zero Dawn 1080p medium FSR set to balance. We're getting an average of 73 FPS with this one. And uh, this is just a very well optimized game. No matter where you are, you will get over 60 on this ally, especially at this kind of wattage. And if you take a look at Afterburner, you'll see we're right there at 42 watts. And what this allows it to do is, you know, send enough wattage to the iGPU and the CPU to get those clocks on up there. Next up, we've got Diablo 4, 720p medium. Now, when this was first released, we had to go to all low settings. We're up to medium now, and you can see that we're over 90 FPS. This will run at 900p, but when there's a lot of NPCs on screen, it does drop into the mid 50s. Every once in a while, I kind of wanted to alleviate this, so I just went down to 720. Not bad, and it still looks great. Here's CSGO. Obviously, we're going to have a good time with this one. 1080p, very high. And this will run over 60 FPS at 1440p, high settings. In fact, you can get an average of around 78 FPS at 1440p with this setup connected to an external monitor. I've done one other video with a lot of different uh, eSports games. They're going to run great on this device, especially on the built-in screen. You want to use some RSR, Radeon Resolution Scale. Definitely helps out with the harder to run stuff, but most of the time you won't need to bring the wattage up this high if you're playing on the built-in screen. Star Wars Jedi Survivor. This was pretty impressive. Now at this kind of wattage, we're right there on the edge of 60 and I do have V-Sync on just to not go over it. 720p low, we got an average of 54 FPS and we do have FSR set to performance right now. You can go to ultra performance, which is really gonna scale that resolution down. Doesn't look great, but we can get an average of 62 like that. Not today. Dirt 5, 900p, low settings. We could take this up to around medium and still get a nice constant 60 with V-Sync turned on. But of course, I wanted to keep it unlocked here. And even though we're at 900p, we do have the built-in dynamic resolution scale turned on in the game. I probably should have disabled it because it does look a bit lower than 900p. But either way, I mean, it's still a very playable game. Here's God of War, one of those games that really struggles on iGPUs, even our DNA 3. Right now, we do have FSR set to performance, but we're at 900p. We didn't need to take it down to 720 to get over 60. We got an average of 64 FPS, and of course, at 720, you're going to get a bit more out of it. But I think this is a nice little mix here, especially on a larger display. Plays great on this, and again, check out that CPU package power. We kind of level right out at 42 watts. And finally, Hogwarts Legacy. This one here did much better than I thought it would, but there have been some updates to the game. So we're at 720p low, which isn't the highest resolution, but if you ever tried this on, let's say, the Steam Deck or even the ROG Ally when it was kind of first released, you know, it was really hard to even run over 60 at these kind of settings. But now, with all of the updates to the game and the updated AMD drivers, we're getting an average of 83 FPS with Hogwarts Legacy in dock mode on the Ally. So yeah, I mean, it's totally possible to use your ally as a full-fledged desktop PC. And if you're interested in checking out some games running at 1440p and even 4K, I've got another video. But this one was just a little bit different. Kind of wanted to show you what we could do at 1080. Because when it comes down to it, we are working with a pretty powerful APU. But in the end, it's still integrated graphics. And you know, if you're just kind of not on the go and you wanted to connect this to a larger display up that TDP, get a bit better performance out of it, you can definitely do it. If you've got any questions or if there's anything else you want to see running on the Ally, just let me know in the comments below. And if you want to pick up the uh, ROG Charger dock, link for that is in the description. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.